Word embeddings are great. The way it learns vector representation of words by throwing them in n-dimensional vector space and capture the relation between words, which keeps ability to perform mathematical operation on words like this and became a state-of-the-art method for tasks like sentiment analysis or text generation. But there is a problem with it. It failed to capture semantic of sentence because it doesn't care about order of words in a sentence. For example, if you take this sentence and just switch the position of a word, then, then the whole meaning of the sentence has been changed. But according to word to vector model, the vector representation of words in both the sentence is same and hence for it, both the sentence means the same. That's why we use RNN or recurrent neural networks to preserve information about order of words. That's what skip thought vectors do. It outputs a fixed size vector irrespective of length of input sentence. If you take these two sentences, then you will receive different output vectors. In this video, we'll see how skip thought vector works, its architecture and applications. The name itself is inspired by a method called skip gram, which is used to predict surrounding words for a given input vector. So by extending this process a little and coming to predicting surrounding sentences by given input sentence is what skip thought vectors do. So it learns fixed length vector representation for any given sentence without any label data or supervised learning. It learns from ordering of sentences. So technically, for a given sentence S, it predicts the surrounding sentence S minus 1 and S plus 1. So this is how it works. It uses encoder-decoder architecture where an encoder outputs a fixed length embedding for input sentence and then the decoder takes that embedding to generate previous and next sentence. Both encoder and decoder uses a recurrent neural network to encode and generate sequentially. What is special about this encoder-decoder architecture is it has two decoders. One to generate next sentence called next decoder and the other one is to generate previous sentence called previous decoder network. These three components uses gated recurrent unit or GRU for short. But convergence for such kind of model is very hard because the possibilities of previous and next sentence are enormous and is difficult for humans as well to guess the next sentence. So how can we make the model to converge? There is a method called teacher forcing method. It's a strategy to train RNN by providing ground truth as input. Let's understand by an example. Suppose a RNN model is supposed to generate this sequence and when it starts generating, it outputs the instead of A, which is wrong. And normally this output will become an input for next cell. Since it already gone off the track, most likely it will produce wrong sequence. So instead of feeding that wrong output to generate next word in the sequence, we'll discard that output and feed the correct output as input. And we do it for the rest of the word after calculating error once it produces wrong output. So teaching a model forcefully is what teacher forcing method do. This makes model easy to converge. But as you can guess, this will lead model to bad generalization because in training we have ground truth by using which we are forcing model to generate correct sequence. But during inference, there will be no ground truth available. So the RNN will work like the way it does and produce wrong results on unseen data. And this process is also called exposure biasness. But hold on a second. If this method is so bad, then why we are using it? Well, the goal is to convert a sentence into a fixed size vector, not to generate sequences. So all we need to care about the encoder because that's what it do. It outputs a fixed length vector by taking given input sequence of words. And improvement of encoder while training is totally depend on the error feedback that it receives from decoder. So after convergence, we'll throw the decoders and keep this part so that we can get a fixed length vector for input sequences of words. And this is how skip thought vector works. Text to image translation is a perfect application for this method where the text description get converted into a fixed length vector representation and then the generative model uses that uh, representation to generate images. Looks and sound cool, right? But to me, this sounds like a story of next video. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.